I'd like for you to use your imagination for a few moments. I'd like you to imagine that you're 22 years old and you're about to graduate with a Bachelor of Arts degree. And so you're beginning to look for a job. And so you're scanning different job possibilities. And you recognize there's only one job that you can possibly apply for. And this job is described as follows. The title is Suffering Servant. Now there's quite a lengthy description. The first description is, you will work alongside apprentices who don't understand you. They will, they will have a hunger and thirst for dominant power. And in the end, these apprentices will bail out on you. The second description is you will have colleagues who will have opposing opinions to yours. They will grow in bitterness to the point that they will backstab you. The third description is you will have a neighboring company that will have an idea that you're trying to overthrow them into bankruptcy. Thus, they will not trust you and they will make your life difficult. And the final description is that this job will come with other sufferings that are unknown at this time and likely you will not retire, but you will die in this job. Now, if we're honest with ourselves, most of us would just kind of wait for the following week to see what jobs are available. But this is really the job description of Jesus as the suffering servant. Now, why would Jesus want to be born into this situation? And really, the, the motivation was God's love. And also, God wanted to personally relate with human beings on a one-to-one -one, uh, level. And God continues to want to relate with us on a one-to-one -one personal level. And so today we call today Good Friday. Now we might ask ourselves or scratch our heads after hearing that description of the suffering servant, is it really Good Friday? Now we call today Good Friday because we know there's Easter Sunday, or that is to say we know that there is resurrection. The death and resurrection of Jesus we have to hold together as one event. Now, when we think of a servant, often we think of somebody who maybe serves in a hotel or they serve in a restaurant. We don't often think of Jesus as being a servant. But really, if we define a servant as somebody who does things to benefit others, then we can see that as Jesus goes towards the cross and he dies on the cross, that this is a huge service to humanity. This is a huge benefit to humanity. And so as we continue to celebrate in the good news of Jesus Christ, may we do our part to respond to the different injustices in our world. May we do our part to alleviate the sufferings of others through our acts of charity, our acts of service.